This is a patient with a well-fibrosed SPL3 Clearview hydrophilic acrylic lens. He's status Pogiag laser. We've already taken the lens out in the other eye, and here we're going after the right eye is dominant eye. Um, I've placed my pars plane trocars, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, expand the rexus here by making a little nip in the anterior capsule and tearing it. When I get to about here, the tear stops because there's some fibrosis there, and I don't want to just keep tearing because it'll go peripherally, so I make another little cut to uh, cut through that area of fibrosis, and then I can go ahead and uh, complete this uh, secondary tear to expand the rexus a bit here. Um, I first uh, dissected uh, the rexus off the anterior capsule with viscoelastic, as you saw. So now I'm doing the other side. Uh, I make a little cut and grab this and uh, extend this uh, tear a bit uh, in a circumferential fashion to make the anterior capsule opening a little bit bigger so it'll be safer to go ahead and take this lens out. Now I grab the uh, haptic and I can see this lens is really, you know, socked in. So it's going to be a challenge to get it out. I'm going to retract the lens with a Sinsky hook and use a micro scissor to cut. And then I'm using a 27 gauge needle with viscoelastic on it to help with the uh, dissection here, try to sweep a little bit. I've decided to add iris retractors to stabilize the interior capsule. And after placing these three retractors, I'm going to use a micro scissor uh, to help dissect some of this fibrosis way as I retract the lens with the Sinsky hook. Um, after I've got the lens uh, freed up enough, I can go ahead and uh, cut this haptic right at the junction point of the optic. And this will give me some uh, mobility to go after the other side now. Uh, so I'm injecting viscoelastic on a 27 gauge needle and sweeping the fibrosis as I do this, and I can feel that this side is not quite as tight fibrous thin as the other side, and I feel like I can uh, pull this uh, side of the lens right out of the bag. As it's not uh, as meshed as, as much fibrosis, we've been able to dissect most of that away with the 27 gauge needle. Um, we're going to bring this side of the lens up above the uh, anterior capsule rim and the iris. Uh, and now um, I can go to the other side and cut the last haptic. This is freed up enough that I can pull this out and cut this right here with the scissor. And so now I've got uh, the lens up in the anterior chamber. I'm going to go ahead, cut this in half, and remove it through the main incision. And these lenses, you know, they cut pretty easily. These hydrophilic acrylics are very soft. Uh, so that's one nice thing about uh, taking them out. Uh, getting them out of the bag is really tough, but once you do, they cut easily. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and remove this last remaining uh, haptic by cartwheeling it out of the fibrotic tunnel that was trapped in. Uh, this way I don't put any uh, stress on the capsular bag or the zonules. And now the uh, whole lens is completely removed. Uh, the new lens is going to be injected into the sulcus, uh, dialed into a position, and I'm going to go ahead and do some pars plane of vitrectomy to make sure there's no vitreous uh, coming up. I'm also going to remove some of the summerings ring material that was in the capsular bag. Uh, and once uh, I've done some vitrectomy, I want to optic capture this lens. And the rexus opening is still pretty small and it's pretty tight, so what I'm going to do is use a uh, maxi grip forceps and modify it by uh, making it so the jaws open a little wider. Come through the pars plana and grab the edge of the lens and pull it right through the uh, anterior capsule. So I'm going to pull the optic through the anterior capsule as I push the other side. And this is a very uh, non traumatic way to create optic capture of a three piece silicone lens when you have a fairly tight rexus opening. And now this lens is nice and securely optic captured. I'm going to inject diluted triamcinolone through the pars plana. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my pars plana vitrectomy. And I know this patient does not have a posterior vitreous detachment, even though he has really significant floaters. He doesn't have a PVD. So my plan here is to go ahead and induce a PVD. 
Uh, here I'm right at the optic nerve and I'm going to pull the poster hyloid off the optic nerve as you see here coming up and once it comes up fluid generally will start to lift it off and you can start cutting um, and I'll work my way out into the periphery as I cut. Uh, the poster hyloid is very nicely uh, delineated by the triamcinolone stain uh, and uh, I'm going to work my way all the way around and uh, cut as I lift this gently off of the retina and uh, complete the vitrectomy. Um, you can see this very nicely coming up and I turn the cutter on and off as I do this and I want to be as gentle as possible so I don't induce any retinal traction or tears. And once I've completed the uh, central vitrectomy, I'm going to go out to the periphery and uh, go as far out uh, as I am uh, able to see and clean up uh, the vitreous. Uh, once this is done, I'm going to do scleral depression and inspect 360 degrees to make sure there's no holes or tears. And uh, then I can uh, turn my attention back to the anterior segment, um, see the vitrectomy is completed. Uh, I'll make sure there's no vitreous uh, right up under behind the lens. Uh, pull my trocars and the case is completed. Thank you for your attention to this case.